We are the nation that is proud to be uh, the startup nation, and number one in the world in terms of uh, startup nation per capita, number two in the world after the United States in the number of startup uh, uh, in total, in terms of scientific papers, um, rich cultural life. It takes a lot, a lot of inner strength because A, there's conviction, and B, what are the alternatives? What are the alternatives? To go back to Europe? I mean, many Israelis are living here and we are very pleased, but I'm, I'm, I'm talking about for us to have the home for the Jewish people, State of Israel, is, is something that uh, is more important than everything. And therefore, I think this is what gives the drive for uh, and the strength to the Israelis in spite of the very difficult neighborhood that we, we are living in. You, you all hear about uh, Iran today, and uh, just a couple of words about, uh, about Iran. Iran is a threat to all of us. Iran is a threat to all of us. Just think of the Iranians deciding to close the Hormuz straight with a nuclear capability. If Iran today is perpetrating uh, an act of terror through their proxies, whether it's Hezbollah and others, and not just in our region, elsewhere, imagine if they would be able to do it with nuclear capability. Or if they would develop nuclear capability, they might say, you know what, we will be careful, we're not, doing, we're not going to do it ourselves, but we'll do it for our boxes. So they will provide terrorist organizations that can operate in Europe and operate elsewhere. <laughs> and uh, no one would like to see uh, an armed conflict, but I think that if the international community would be united in imposing binding sanctions, binding sanctions, it will, uh, it has a very good chance to influence or to bring the leadership in, in Iran, in Tehran, to understand that it takes them nowhere. But I think not the international community, not the Gulf country, certainly not us that we are one of those that have been promised by Ahmadinejad that he will wipe us out. So imagine uh, if he has nuclear capability, we just, we, all of us, cannot take this chance. So this is, that was the main topic that was discussed between Prime Minister Netanyahu and uh, President Barack uh, Obama just uh, um, yesterday in, in Washington. But uh, it's an issue that concerns Europe, concerns the EU. I think the EU has uh, a, a, an important role to play in making sure that the sanctions are working, but more importantly, that, that the international community, including China and, and Russia. Because also China and Russia are not being uh, immune. I mean, just think of the Chechnyans being supplied by whoever with non-conventional uh, uh, capacity. I'm going through, uh, uh, through their uh, terrorist spree in, in Moscow. Or, the, uh, or other minority groups in, in China. I think this is something that everyone should be concerned with and it is not being allowed to be uh, proliferated. So these are some of the, uh, you know, a very short introduction to a very, very uh, volatile uh, region. But uh, uh, I have to uh, also mention the fact that I was talking before, uh, if you look at the population explosion factor, it's another aspect that we all should watch because it's not only Egypt that will be, in, by the year 2050, 160 million, it will be also Ethiopia, 160 million. So just think of the number of people living along the Nile, which will triple and more, not much more than triple. But the water in the Nile will triple. The arable land is is, uh, is is shrinking. Uh, how do you provide food, basic food? Uh, is technology and biotechnology will be able to close the gap? And everyone says that the, the next war won't be, uh, will have nothing to do with us, but on the water resources of countries such as Egypt, Sudan, Ethiopia. So population explosion is also 
a very, a, 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 and the ability to feed people is a very important factor that we all should uh, look into. And the fact that uh, the Netherlands, for example, is one of the leaders in terms of assisting developing countries that should be commended, because it's not just doing good because you want to do good, but it's an interest because there will be no stability if there will be countries that there's so much of unrest because people are desperate and I cannot provide for their for their families. They will be willing to accept fifty dollars the way Gaddafi was all his mercenaries and kill and do whatever they have to in order to get the fifty dollars and feed their families back in their countries. So this is also one aspect that uh, we all should be thinking of. So this is for my uh, opening remarks and uh, uh, we leave now the floor for questions. And now, how would you like uh, me to go about it? I mean, uh, I want, you want me to handle it, so who will be the first? Who's the pioneer? Who's the brave one? Who's the first one? Okay, please. Uh, I'd like to wonder, um, why do you think it's so bad, specifically, for Iran to have a nuclear weapon, compared to other countries in the neighborhood, such as Pakistan, India, um, former USSR, and also maybe unconfirmed with Israel? Because, because Pakistan and India are not uh, stating uh, that they are going to use this nuclear capability to annihilate a country, uh, a member of, uh, uh, of the family of nations. That's a big difference. None of them is saying we are going to wipe out our neighbor, our enemy. Uh, and, and remember, we are vulnerable. When it takes uh, uh, India or Pakistan, God forbid, and I don't wish that they'll be going to any nuclear conflict. Uh, but it will have a limited effect in a small country. Maybe it um, uh, congested. What, what are the ramifications? So, and here it is not something that we suspect that we might do. They say it out in the open. So that's a big difference. Yes, sir. please. So, first of all, you said that uh, about Pakistan and India, they have threatened each other to bomb each other. In fact, so many of you the weapons. Secondly, concerning the statement you made about Chechnya, uh, Chechnya in Russia is the same as Tibet in China. Innocent Chechens are being murdered by Russians, and it was a terrible war that Chechens paid the price. Um, concerning Iran's nuclear capability, um, if you look on 16th of January, uh, Ehud Barak, the defense minister, stated the statement that there is some direct evidence that Iran is actually building nuclear weapons. This is confirmed by US intelligence agencies as well as uh, uh, Israeli intelligence agencies. Uh, yet you want to beat the drones of war continuously and kill innocent Iranians also, and result in a far more disastrous effect for Israel. Not, not at all. If you look at the reports of the uh, International uh, Atomic a uh, Agency, and you see the reports, they will tell you not only that they are working on that, but it's for military, military purposes, it's not us. IAEI, um, um, that, are, um, uh, that the Iranians are um, working tirelessly in order to acquire um, uh, nuclear capability. So uh, it's, uh, this, is, this is something that, by the way, is, 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 is a basic fact that is accepted by the United States, Europe, Israel, and others. Even the, even, even, even the Russians are, are, are concerned about that. Yes. By the way, um, um, Europe is also at risk because the potential, uh, because today they were able to develop the long range missiles. Which